Let me, we have about five, maybe I may cheat and take a couple more minutes beyond the five minutes left and ask you about congressional. Today, Mr. Solomon, is at nine o'clock. You have a hearing in which you take testimony on congressional. Congressional uh, districts. Di district. We have no maps. Congressional districts. I don't have a map. Uh, uh, prior to that, as I understand it, MALDEF and a, and a coalition of groups is going to have a press conference to put out their proposed maps. And although I couldn't get them to reveal the exact contents of those maps, what I understand is they're going to make the argument that I believe that the growth in population in Texas over the last 10 years was 89% Hispanic. And therefore, the maps that you all produce for Congress need to reflect that population. It's not just a question of what the four new seats look like, but that maybe the entire apple cart needs to be upturned and then turned back over to reflect the reality of the current population. What do you think about that as a principle, not, not having seen what they're intending to do? There's been a lot of Hispanic growth in the state, obviously. The numbers sort of reflect that. They're not in one, just one or two areas. I mean, they're spread out throughout the state. Um, I appreciate the fact that what they think needs to be done, they've also filed a lawsuit. And since in, in, in redistricting, as most people know, you're sitting there, you know, with lawsuit. I had have, I have to lawyer up when I got the appointment. I mean, you know, you've got litigation counsel, you're being advised, and since they wanted to file a lawsuit, you know, I'm going to be limited in what I can say about right. that. At this but, but again, but what about, the, you can talk about the principle, even if you don't talk about MALDEF or you don't talk about the lawsuit. Is the principle that the maps ought to be drawn to reflect the current and projected composition of the population, is that a legitimate principle? That, that is their argument uh, because everything in context with this congressional map seems to be leading to the courthouse. No matter what Mr. Seliger and I or the legislature does, right. it's, it's, going, it's going to go to the courthouse uh, because the groups seem intent on making sure it goes to the courthouse. Mr. Seliger, let me try with you then. Do you, do you believe that the composition of the population, and in particular the composition of the growth over the last 10 years, ought to be the leading factor in how those maps get drawn? Clearly, the composition of the population is, is very important. But add to that the, the requirements of redistricting for districts that are, this, is, th this one's a, a, applied loosely, compact and contiguous, and compliant with law. And so if you have to have a senatorial district that's 811,000 people, which is the ideal number, if you have to have a lot of legs and tentacles and things like that, the law clearly does not require that, even though you can create a district that may be a, a Hispanic opportunity or African American opportunity district. Um, one of the things that, that we've seen, and I use the district in, in Houston represented, represented by our vice chairman, Mario Gallegos. For six months when, after Mario and I were appointed, he said, you know, growth in Houston has been extraordinary in my part of the, of, of the city, and it is largely Hispanic, and any growth would be, and, uh, and there's a new Hispanic district. What we found when we got the figures from the census was he, had, he was short 160,000 people. So once you do something and, and fill in that district so that it is legal, and make sure that the population that are put into that district meet all the requirements of law in terms of, of the ethnic composition of that population, yeah. what do you have left over? And so I think one of the things that we're going to see in, in this uh, product is that while the growth has been largely Hispanic, movement is important too, and, and how that population has diffused through the state. Yeah. And, uh, it's not just growth, but it's location. That's right. Early on in a, in a meeting, a joint hearing that we held in Dallas with, uh, with the House when Todd Hunter was, was leading the process, somebody came up to, to us and said, and this is mathematically absolutely true, that since Texas has more Hispanics than Michigan has people and Michigan has 16 House seats, the state of Texas should have 16 Hispanic, Hispanic seats. Senate seats. Yeah. But but neither the law nor fairness as it is applied to redistricting really would seem to bear that out. And it's because of location. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, unlike the Senate and unlike the House, in fact, only four congressional districts of the 32 currently lost population in the last 10 years. And we're going to end up with four additional seats as a result of the great growth around the state. And so the big fight is over where those seats should be and which party should be favored to have those seats. You all both know, because we talked about it, many people may know, Politico reported this week that Lamar Smith and Joe Barton got into it pretty good this week, with Joe Barton cussing a blue streak about Lamar Smith. Lamar Smith and Henry Cuellar have apparently been trying to forge a compromise among, within the delegation to go too Republican and too Democratic. But the reality is, 
whether Joe Barton wants all the seats to be Republican or Lamar Smith and Henry Cuellar want it to be split, they have no power, in fact, because you all are the ones who decide what those congressional maps look like. Isn't that right? True, and we're getting along fine. And you guys are not cussing yeah, at one another. We get along fine. You have no problems. Right. Um, but are you, you will consider what they, if, if they do come to you with what the delegation's wishes are, if they could come to some agreement, that will be one element that you consider, but it won't be the only element, obviously. I think we'd love to have their input. You know, uh, they've spent probably a couple of years and tens of hundreds of hours and, and, and dollars in trying to uh, yeah. anticipate all of this. It would be nice when we finally see what their input is. But at the end of the day, the legislature is going to get to make the final decisions. One of the few times we actually have any influence, apparently, with over, Washington. Over Washington, that's right. <laughs>